Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church, Delaire, New Jersey. I'm Pastor Wilbur Phillips, Jr. Good to be back. I was home last week. Mr. Gout came and visited me. He and I had a very good time. In fact, he had a good time, and I didn't enjoy myself as much as he did. But praise the Lord, I'm better now, so. God got me through it. Yeah, he brought me through it. But it was not fun on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in particular. God is faithful. He takes care of us. There are things that happen in our bodies, things that happen around us, things that happen in our lives. But the only constant and the only faithfulness that you can guarantee is God's. And he is that. So we welcome you across the airwaves. We welcome you there to hear in, in public and in person. And uh, we want to get into, it's a, it's a hot day. This is being recorded for posterity. It's a hot day in the Northeast today, up in the 90s. But we praise the Lord for being here anyway. He's faithful. So we want to spend some time in his word, see what he's telling us. What he's told us is telling us and will continue to tell us through his word. And we pray that God would touch all of our hearts and minds, that we might receive it, obey it, and walk in it. This morning, we're going back to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. We've been in the book of John because we're dealing with the seven I am's, the seven statements that Jesus makes of I am. We've dealt with two of them already. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. We've dealt with those two. Um, we, we realize, as I said, for I am the light, Jesus is telling us who he is or who he was. I am the light. That's who he was. Uh, and he still is. I am the bread, and we'll get to I am the vine. Both of them are really focusing on what Jesus does or what he gives us. He gives us bread. He, 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 he is the vine, but he does something by being the vine. Today we're going to deal with I am the door or the gate, whichever one you prefer. It's one and the same. And I am the good shepherd. They are one and the same. And the reason, that they're not one and the same, the reason they're tied together is because Jesus says them together. John chapter 10, verse uh, 9, he says, I am the gate. John chapter 10, verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. John chapter 10, verse 14, I am the good shepherd. So it's all together, but I am going to separate them so that we can keep them distinct as to, even though they, they connect, we're going to keep them distinct. Today, we're going to deal with I am the gate or I am the door, whichever one you prefer. It's the same thing. And then Lord willing, in two weeks, I won't be here next week. Uh, Minister Wooder's going to be here. I won't be here next week. But um, in two weeks, Lord willing, we'll deal with I am the good shepherd, and that's going to take probably a couple of weeks. Um, remember, all of these I ams are so that we can understand who he is over and above what he does. What he does comes out of who he is. And that's not just for Jesus. That's for all of us. That's why we need to redefine for ourselves who we are. And God is, has and is redefining who we are so that we can understand what we're supposed to do. If you don't know who you are, you won't know what you're supposed to do. And, and here it is. Honestly, even if you don't know who you are, you're going to do who you are. Yeah. Ah. Let me see if I can say it like this. A monkey does this and may not ever know it's called a monkey, but it does this because it's a monkey. You're going to do righteous because you are. Amen. If you don't do righteous, God says we have a new nature. So you've got to define or identify what nature are you walking under. Because whatever nature you are, whether you can identify it or not, you're going to do it. Monkeys don't do this because they, oh, I, that's right, I'm a monkey. Monkeys do this whether they ever know they're monkeys. Because that's what they are. You are the children of God. You are the children of God if you're in Jesus Christ. But God wants you to know more and more about that so that you can walk confidently in what you do as a child of God. So today we're going to deal with I am the gate or I am the door. It's going to be out of John chapter 10, and it's going to start at verse 1. Today I'm only really going to read to verse 9. It's 1 to 16, but I'm going to only read to verse 9 because we want to stay focused on the gate or the door. So I'm going to pray. We're going to read the scripture, and we're going to go into the word for today. Amen. 
Father God, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for even with the heat, you're still God. Even with the heat, you're still speaking to us. Even with the heat, you still have a word for us. And even with the heat, we're still listening because you're worthy. So thank you for this time and this place. Bless us now, not only to hear it, but to then receive it and do it. To receive it, believe it, and obey it. And to allow it to change us from the inside out. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. John chapter 10, verses 1 through 9. I'm reading out of the TNIV. That just means today's New International Version. If you've got the New King James Version or you've got the King James Version, it, it, it's all going to follow. So starting at verse 1. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Verily, truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. In this passage, Jesus is talking about being the gate or the door. I think the New Testament is going to use the door. It's the same thing. And he's talking about being the good shepherd. Today, we want to focus on him being the gate or the door. First off, I'm going to give you some historical stuff because, again, I found this more and more as I study. If you don't really get contextually what, what the writers then were writing, You'll read it from a 2022 perspective, from a Western Hemisphere perspective, from an American perspective, and oftentimes we'll never get the full impact of what it really means in, their, in its time. It, it's kind of like, um, I, I like to read and I like historical stuff, so it's, it's kind of like watching a Dickens movie or a Dickens play, and I, no reference to our musician, his last name is Dickens, but meaning Charles Dickens. If you're going to see Oliver Twist or you're going to see A Tale of Two Cities or you're going to read uh, uh, um, um, Scrooge, you've kind of got to understand the historical essence of what's going on with Ebenezer Scrooge's time or you're going to see it or try to view it and, and make it fall into perspective in our time and they don't necessarily match. So the reason I give you history so much is because I'm a firm believer in recognizing if you don't have historical context, you're not going to get the just of really what's being said. The principle of the gospel is the principle of the gospel. But how it relates to scripture, you've got to understand some history. Amen. So what's a sheep pen or a sheep fold? The New Testament uh, in the King James may say sheep fold. I think it does. A sheep pen is the same thing. It was a secured fixture. It could be a permanent fixture in which, like a barn, something you had built, or it could be something that was thrown together by putting sticks together, having them intertwined with sharp ends on the outside. Uh, it could be rocks, not so much stones, but rocks put together. It usually, typically was circular. Didn't really have corners. And it was built high enough that animals couldn't jump over or climb over, and it was built high enough that sheep couldn't go over. So animals on the outside couldn't get in, sheep couldn't get out, and dogs or wolves, which were <laughs> definite enemies of the sheep, couldn't necessarily jump or get over. So it was high enough, it was circular, and typically, typically, they did not have doors. It was a narrow opening, narrow enough for sheep to get through and for a person to get through, but it wasn't like right in our church, you won't see it, but we have a double door. You can open both doors at the same time. It wasn't that wide because the purpose of it was just for really the sheep to get in and out and for the person of the shepherd or the gatekeeper to get in and to get out. It wasn't a place to congregate. It was a place to put your sheep. It was a place to put your sheep during the night in particular because during the day they were out grazing. 
But at night, they had to have somewhere where they could rest. And so you would put them in this enclosure called a sheepfold or a sheep pen so that you could protect them and know where they were. And you made it high enough so the animals couldn't get in, and you made it high enough so the animals couldn't get out. Okay? You had two types of sheepfolds or sheep pens. You had ones that were in the city, and you had ones that were out in the countryside. The ones that were in the city typically had what's called a gatekeeper or doorkeeper. He was a porter, and I say he typically wouldn't be a female. He might have been, but I doubt it. It was typically a male, and he would watch the sheep pen. That was his job. And, and here's what you got to understand, because when we think of sheep, we only think of one shepherd. That sheep pen might have been as big as this circular and might have had four or five or six flocks of sheep in there. But each shepherd was so close to his sheep that when he spoke, his sheep knew who he was and went their way with him. So if you had 200 sheep in there, and I was the shepherd and I said, come on, y'all. They knew my voice and the ones that were mine would go and the ones that weren't mine wouldn't budge. The gatekeeper's job was to secure that sheepfold, especially at night, to make sure nothing would try to come through the hole. Nothing could really come over the top. They could try, but very rarely could they come over the top. But the key was there was this opening, and typically there was no door. So the gatekeeper's job was to protect and watch the opening, thus becoming the door. In fact, the gatekeeper and or the shepherd would lay across the door at night so that if you tried to come in through the door, you had to come in by him. Look what Jesus says. Look at Jesus. I, we didn't read it, but I want you to go back to your text. Go to verse 11. He says it a couple times, but I, I, in fact, I won't go to 11. Go to 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. That's literal. They would not only he's, talk, he's not talking about future laying down for the cross at the cross. He's talking about even as being the gate, as being the one that was the door. Since there was no swinging door and there was an opening, I would lay across the door. And if you didn't cut it, you would have to come by me to get to my sheep. That's a good shepherd. Now, notice Jesus says he's the good shepherd. And we'll get into that. Why? Because there can be a distinctive difference with a <laughs> with a bad shepherd. A bad shepherd wouldn't necessarily lay across because if you got wolves and dogs and they're ravenous, they're going to tear you up. But a good shepherd says, I will give up my life to protect the sheep. So that the sheep don't get eaten up. See, let me, before I go too much further, let me just drop this on you about us being sheep. One of the most intimate relationships there can be between any animal and, if you will, a caregiver is a sheep and the caregiver. He doesn't give us chickens. He doesn't give us lions and tigers and bears. He gives us sheep. Why? Because most other animals, one, either have some means of defense, which sheep don't, or when trouble, co <laughs> when trouble comes, most other animals will run away. Sheep won't. I'm not trying to be smart, but he calls us sheep. Sheep are dumb animals. When enemies come at them, they don't run. You know what they do? They huddle. They have no defense mechanism. They don't have fangs. They don't have claws. They have nothing to defend with, and they don't run. They don't run fast anyway, but they don't even run away. They huddle. Well, if you're a wolf or you got a couple of wolves, you're sitting ducks because I don't even have to spread you out. Oh, look. Oh, there they are. And, and they're not running. I mean, they're not moving. Oh, this is going to be good. And God calls us that belong to him sheep. The shepherd would spend so much time with the sheep that they knew him and he knew them. The shepherd would spend so much time with the sheep that he very rarely ever left them. Like if, if he was in the city, he would leave them at night. Here's the key. He would leave them at night with the gatekeeper. And he might go rest over here knowing that the gatekeeper would keep them secure within the sheepfold. And in the morning, he would come and call, call his sheep, and they would come out. And once he got them all out, he would walk, and they would follow him. 
I'm giving you all this because you got to understand why Jesus says I'm the door and why Jesus says I'm the shepherd and why Jesus says I'm the good shepherd. So if he's the door and he's willing to lay across the opening, he's saying you can't come out except through me and you won't get in except through me. And the gatekeeper's job is when he's not there. The gatekeeper takes over for the shepherd, watching the flock. The flock is the safe haven for the sheep to be able to lay down and rest and get some rest because the next day they've got to go and graze in the pasture and they may have to walk a while before they ever find good green pasture. But they trust their shepherd because they have no idea. Remember, they're not smart. They're dumb. No disrespect, but as smart as you think you are, to spiritual matters, you're dumb. And God says, if you don't follow me, there are wolves licking their chops, waiting for you, waiting for me. And they come in various forms, but there are wolves and dogs that God wants to keep you within the walls of the sheep pen to protect you from. Since there's no opening and he lies across it, the sheep know he's still with them. We'll get into this in a couple weeks. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. My shepherd's with me. And I'm telling all of you that are Christian, all of you that follow Jesus, you need to always remember, whether you feel like it or not, he's with you. Even when you're trying to walk away, the Bible says in another portion of scripture that when one out of the hundred walks away, the shepherd will leave the sheep with the sheepfold and go get the one because every single one of the sheep is important to the shepherd. Why? Because he's the good shepherd. The bad shepherd really doesn't care. Oh, well, I lost one. I still got 99. The good shepherd says, no, no, no. I had 100. I'm going to keep 100. Hmm. Look, can I take you back to the scripture? Go back to verse 5. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not know who he is. So he gives us a couple people we want to talk about before we really get into defining fully who he is as the gate. He talks about the stranger. The stranger can't lead the sheep away. Because the gatekeeper won't allow him access. He says, when the stranger comes, listen, he didn't say if the stranger comes. He said when the stranger comes. You need to understand within First Baptist Church, any church within the body of Christ, there's always going to be a stranger that's going to come. And with his voice, his or her voice, try to lead you astray. What is it in the voice that, that, that is distinctive enough to know it's different? It's false doctrine. He says, my sheep know my voice. I will say this to you again. It's one thing to be a baby sheep, but if you've been a sheep for 5, 10, 15 years and you don't know the word, you better question what kind of sheep are you? Amen. And how close are you walking with your shepherd? Because the Bible says, my sheep know my voice and, and, and they follow. Not know my voice and when I call say, eh, I ain't going. When, they, when he calls... They go. So, so, <laughs> if the stranger comes with false doctrine, and who's the gatekeeper? Who's the one watching the gate when the shepherd's not there? That's the Holy Ghost. You can't get into the body of Christ unless you come in through the Holy Ghost anyway. The only one that leads you to Christ is the Holy Ghost. So he protects the pen. He protects the fold, even if the shepherd's not directly there. You're in the city, and the shepherd's at the Ramada Inn. Holy Ghost got you. Jesus is in heaven right now. Who's the gatekeeper? Holy Ghost. The door you came into was through Jesus. So what do you do? You come in through Jesus, but you come in by Holy Ghost. He's the gatekeeper, and he keeps strangers out. Here's the, here's the problem. Even when strangers try to find their way in, notice what he said, if they try to climb, because they don't try to come in through the door. Jesus is the door. Amen. They can't come in through the door. What they do, they try to climb. Try to climb over this enclosure. It never really had a roof. 
Very rarely did they have roofs. They, they, were, they were circular, and they didn't have roofs. So, so therefore, since there was no roof to the structure, you could climb, if you could, climb up enough. And it wasn't so much, he's using, I'm saying he, meaning people now. In its real sense, if they're wolves and dogs, they're trying to climb. Well, dogs don't climb well. Felines climb. Cats and tigers and jaguars, they climb. But dogs don't climb too well, and wolves don't either. They can jump. That's why you would build it high enough so they couldn't jump over. But they have a hard time. Dogs don't climb well. So if the stranger came in, or a wolf or a dog, one in its literal sense, one in its figurative sense, did somehow try to get in the pen, the gatekeeper's job was to huddle them together and protect them by getting in between the sheep and the intruder. He says, the stranger, they won't follow because they don't know the voice. Let me say this to you, and I'm, I'm, I've got to be blank. I've got to be blatantly real. If you can easily be tripped up, or you know the word in having heard it, but won't follow it, you're going contrary to what the word told me. I, I'm sorry, and I know we've hit, had it preached, and I grew up hearing it preached as well. And first off, everybody's not God's sheep. Secondly, everybody in the pen may not belong to that shepherd. Remember I told you there's multiple flocks in the pen. Some of the sheep aren't good sheep. Everybody in a church isn't a member of the body of Christ. Everybody's not following the good shepherd. And if you've got sheep that are trying to rub up next to you and influence you not to follow that shepherd and you're willing to go that way, you better kind of re-examine and evaluate who your shepherd is because the Bible, unless it's a lie and it's not, says you will know your shepherd's voice. You will follow him. And if you don't follow him, maybe it's because you got a different shepherd. I, I, I've, got, I've got to give you the word the way it is. I can't give you what we'd like to hear to make us comfortable in us. I've got to give you what God has said. So, so you've, got, you've got this stranger who comes in. He doesn't know the sheep by name. But what he does is he'll try to come in like the shepherd. He'll try to mimic the shepherd. But the sheep that really belong to the good shepherd are going to know, no, mm-mm, that's, mm-mm, that doesn't sound like my shepherd. That doesn't, that doesn't, mm-mm, that's not what my shepherd does. That's not what my shepherd says. And so they won't follow him. The sheep do not know the stranger, and because they don't know him, they don't trust him. If you can easily trust a stranger, then the question is, is that shepherd a stranger to you? Maybe it's not a stranger to you. I'm, I'm sorry. Got to bring the gospel. All of us had different shepherds before we came to the good shepherd. If the stranger, which is being symbolized by, this, by a person other than the good shepherd, comes to you and you don't see him as a threat or distinguish him as something different from the good shepherd, then maybe you've retreated back or never left. The initial stranger, which really wasn't a stranger. Because the first, listen, the, the first stranger you meet is Jesus. Amen. You're born in sin, you're shaped in iniquity. You're born with a different shepherd. You have to switch shepherds. So if you switch shepherds and the new shepherd says, you know my voice, and you don't know my voice, and you're still walking after a different shepherd, maybe that shepherd is still your shepherd. Because according to scripture, you're going to change. Okay. Here's another group of people. Go back to the chat. You guys are still with me? Yes, We're only going to deal with the gate. We're only dealing with the gate. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, verse 1, anyone who does not, anyone, any, any, anyone, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, if you don't come in through Jesus, I already told you, he's the door. There was no door on hinges. He laid across the door. He laid across the doorway. 
If you don't come in through him and you're climbing or you're digging or you're getting some other kind of way into the sheep pen, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. This has always boggled my mind. I'll tell you why it's boggled my mind. Because growing up, and it wasn't until I did some study on it, growing up I would think they're synonymous. But that's not what it says. It doesn't say a thief or a robber. Or means one or the other. It says a thief and a robber. They're two different beings. A thief is not a robber and a robber is not a thief. Robbery is not theft and theft is not robbery. And that's not just biblically. That's legally. Larceny, armed robbery, it's not the same as theft. So today I'm going to give you a little law. You've got to have two different things going on to distinguish between thievery and robbery, between a theft and robbery, between a thief and a robber. The first thing you've got to have is the presence of a threat. Typically, it can be by a weapon, but it doesn't have to be in use of a weapon. It's a threat. If there's a threat that's been posed, a threat that's been given, it distinguishes between the two. Here's the example. You can go into someone's house and they not be home, grab up their TV and run out the house. That's being a thief. You never came in contact with the people, don't even know them, don't have to know them, and didn't rub shoulders with them, didn't see them, and didn't speak to them. Robbery is if they're home and you pose some sort of threat to them, especially if you had a club, a gun, or whatever, but if you didn't and you posed a threat to them, now you're a robber. And robbery's worse than thievery. And don't let it be armed robbery. You don't hear about armed thievery? Have you ever heard armed thievery? Because you can't be an armed thief. Because once you're armed, you're a robber. He says there's thieves and robbers. He didn't say there were thieves or robbers. He said before me, which means before he ever came on the scene, there were thieves and there were robbers. And the thief cometh but to kill, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the robber comes even worse because he doesn't want to just steal you. He wants, he'll club you. He'll shoot you. The second thing is, and it ties in with it, is the proximity. A thief could come in contact with people. Example, I could go into Macy's and take something out, run out the store, even if there's 100 people around me, and keep it moving, but that would still be theft because there was no threat given. And in order for a threat to be given, I've, what? I've got to be dealing with or speaking to someone in my proximity. So you've got to have the posing of, th- of a threat, armed or not, and you've got to have proximity in which a threat is given. So you can't be a thief. You can be a thief in the midst of a bunch of people, but if there's no threat and if there's no proximity or interaction with the person, it's just thievery. If you're in the midst of a bunch of people and I'm trying to take it and this sister here, I won't say her name, this sister says, hey, 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 you can't do that. And I say, you better watch yourself. I've now moved from thievery, even though I took it. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. That's robbery. Jesus says, thieves and robbers came before me and thieves and robbers will be here after me. Matthew 24 says, Matthew 24, 11 says, many false prophets will arise and mislead many. Amen. He calls them thieves and robbers. Why? Because what are they trying to do? The stranger's one thing. The stranger's trying to come in and the stranger's trying to give you false doctrine, but the thief is trying to steal you. The stranger's trying to dissuade you, but the thief is trying to take you and what you got. And the robber is not only trying to take what you got, but if I need to, I will kill you. I will pose a threat to you. And we see it within the kingdom and we see it within our church. That young man that went to South Carolina a few years ago, he didn't take anything of essence. 
but he took lies. He was a robber. He was a robber that somehow got in the sheepfold. Y'all ain't catching it. He didn't steal and get out. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. They were in the sheepfold, but somehow they got in. He got in. They wanted to trust that he was there for the right reasons until he took the mask off. See, because sometimes they try to come in as sheep. We know the term, a sheep in, you didn't hear it, in wolves' clothing. Let me, it's much easier for me to get close to you if I act like I am what you say you are than if I show you who I really am. And Jesus says, that's why I'm at the gate. Because I can tell the fakes, and I can tell the ones that don't belong around here. And I'm going to protect you at night when you're trying to rest. I'm going to protect you when you're in your haven. Will some get in sometimes? Unfortunately, yes. You've got people in church that don't know the shepherd. You've got deacons that don't know the shepherd. You've got trustees that don't know the shepherd. They're in the sheep pen. Don't tell nobody. You've got ministers and pastors who don't know the sheep or the shepherd, but they hang out with the sheep. We'll get into that later. There's another term he uses later, and we'll get with that when we deal with him being the shepherd. A hireling, a hired servant. We'll deal with that later, too. Oh, Jesus knows what he's talking about. And and remember who he's talking to. Can I take you back? Y'all still with me? Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees. He's primarily talking not to anybody. He's specifically talking to the Pharisees. They are religious, zealous leaders in the church at Jerusalem. And I say church. It was their church at that time. But I'm using that so you understand. In, 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 in the congregation of the Jews, they were the big boys. The Pharisees and Sadducees were the learned ones. They were the ones that had authority. And therefore, he's talking to them, tell, <laughs> telling them, basically, you guys are wolves and dogs. I know who you are. I know you've got authority, but I know you're not good shepherds. One, because I'm the good shepherd. And two, because you don't follow after me. You follow after your own thing. And I want to tell the church here and here, as long as I'm preaching the word, follow the Christ in me. When you find that I don't follow, live, or preach what God has said, you better find yourself another person to listen to and watch. Because the only one you need to follow is the good shepherd, and my job is to lead you to him. I am not the good shepherd. And if I ever get up here and tell you I'm the good shepherd, you need to turn me off. There's one good shepherd. I may be an under shepherd, good shepherd, under shepherd, good shepherd, under, under shepherd. And that means I'm following the good shepherd. If I'm an under shepherd and I ain't following him, I'm not even an under shepherd because I ain't under. Forget all this battle between churches and preachers and pastors, and I came in through Apollos, and I came in through Paul. Only God gives the increase, and only God matters. He didn't say you're such and such a sheep. He said you're sheep. Either you belong to the good shepherd, or you don't. You might be somebody else's sheep. That's a sermon for another day. I don't want to beat you up with that. Thief comes to steal the sheep. And Jesus calls this stranger thieves and robbers. He said some just try to get one and get out. He said others try to get one and kill him. And kill as many as they can (laughs) while they try to get out. Thieves do not have the welfare of the sheep in mind. They don't care anything about sheep. They care about what they can get from the sheep. What they can get for the sheep. But not for the benefit of the sheep. The only one that comes to steal and kill and destroy is not the good shepherd, but the thief 
and or the robber. Be wary of that in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is spoken about 28 times in scripture. The kingdom of God is spoken about 68 times in the New Testament. They're only spoken about in the New Testament. The kingdom of God is the universal realm of God. Everything falls under the kingdom of God. But remember, John said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When? When Jesus was coming. Why? Because the rule of the, rule of the kingdom of God comes into sphere when Jesus comes and sets up his rule. And he came the first time, and he, even though he didn't, st didn't establish his kingdom per se, John said, the kingdom of heaven's at hand. This, this king has come. And therefore, you can be under the auspices of the kingdom of God and not be in the kingdom of heaven. That's why when Bible, the Bible talks about he will separate the wheat from the tear, the wheat and the tear grow in the kingdom of God. But only the wheat are truly in the kingdom of heaven. And only God can tell the wheat and the tear enough to separate them. Because they grow together. Just like there can be sheep in the sheep pen and they not all be the Lord's sheep. David said the Lord is my shepherd. I'm distinguishing which, listen, I know there's a bunch of shepherds out here. Let me tell you who he is. My shepherd is the Lord. And you need to be able to walk around confidently and know who your shepherd is. And you will know based on who you follow. Yes, sir. And who you follow will be determined by what you do with what he says. Y'all still with me? Yes, I'm going to end this up. In modern day times, let me give you access to gateways. My daughter is an IT major. She's going to get more and more into this this year, going into her major. There are gateways set up, and, and especially in computers, and hackers know how to kind of get past gateways. They have ingenious ways of getting past gateways. What's the purpose of a gateway? The gateway is to only allow access to those who permission's been granted to. You have a one-stop gateway. L let me not get so technical. Let me break it down so all, because every single one of us in here deals with gateways all day long. You got a voicemail box? Please enter your code. You won't get to the mailbox unless you know the pro because you don't have access to all that the data is unless you can give the proper data to get past the gateway entrance. ATM, what's your PIN number? And what hackers do is they figure out ways to either bypass your code or to figure out what your code is. For the authentic Christian, there will never be a hacker good enough to break down God's access for you. There will be people that try it all day long. They will figure out ways. Log into your email. What's your login? You don't know that login? At least on my job in most places, after three times, locks you out. What I love about Jesus and God is, 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 is threefold. He's one God, but three persons. Either one of the Godhead, any, any three of the Godhead. One, the Bible says, that since there was no door, Jesus would lay across it. He would lay down his life. Understand this. He is the door, and he's always there. If he's not, the gatekeeper's there. So he's always allowing access to the ones that have permission to come in. He doesn't ever put a standby guy who doesn't know what's going on. I'm not the one that gives you access to the kingdom. God is the one that gives you access to the kingdom. And he does it via the Holy Ghost. What I love about God is, is that he, he always leaves it open. We, we see the, 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 the picture of, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I get that. That's scripture. I get that. But what Jesus is saying is, I'm always available to come through. Even if it's at the darkest hour of night. Even if it's at your deepest and lowest moment. I am at the doorway. I'm not there to block you from coming in. I'm there to block that which shouldn't be in from coming in. But if you want to come in, 
even if it's dead of night, even if they're on your tail, come on through and you can have access. Because I'm the good shepherd and I am the gate. And if I'm not at, if I'm not even there as the one laying across the door, the gatekeeper will let you in. The purpose of a gate or a door or an entryway is not only to let, it, it, okay, it's not only to not let that which is outside in, it's also to check that which is inside on what's going on outside. Anti-spam. Uh, blocks on your, on your computer for children so they don't get porn sites and they don't get adult channels. You set up what? A block so that the gateway is blocked not from those getting, not just from those getting in, but from those that are already in, not being able to access something that's out. Nuclear researchers, when they go to work, they got to give up their cells. They got to check their cells at the door, and everything they do on the computer is prohibited by somebody who sets up the computer system so that only certain things they can access. They just can't access every and anything. That's why their phones have to be taken at the door because their phones don't have that kind of protection and they may go on and get something that they got no business letting in. What I'm trying to get you to see is that Jesus isn't only there to keep other stuff out. Jesus is there to make sure you don't go out to other stuff. He's the door that blocks the stuff from getting in and he's the door that blocks you from getting stuff that's out because some of the stuff that's out there you got no business looking at. You got no business hearing. You got no business touching. You got no business seeing. You got no business being in its purview at all. You don't need to be around it at all. And so what he does is he says, Holy Ghost, check them at that door. Through me, check them so that not only the enemy can't get in, but they can't get out to the enemy. And so what do we do? We find ways to climb over the wall. I won't look at them. Let me talk to you. We find ways to climb over the wall because we can't go through the door. We find ways to climb over the wall because we still want what's out there. He says, why do you think there's only one opening into the sheep pen? So that I can control the access of what comes in and what goes out. And yet, because I've given you free will, you choose to find another way. Don't we always say, I am the way, the truth on the screen and the light. No man cometh unto the Father. What do you think that's speaking about? The door. No man gets to the Father. He says, he said in the very first verse, he said, anybody that finds another way in other than through me, be careful. And, and let me say this to you. If you're already in and anybody's trying to find another way to get out and access something, be careful. Am I saying you're not a sheep? No, I'm telling you this. There's a reason why he's at the door and you're trying to go around the door. Because he knows and you know. What's out there that you're trying to get, you need to stay in the sheep pen. Because you may get out there and even when he comes out after you, he may have to find you all badgered and bruised and beat up. Sheep get away from, from the shepherd and they get caught in briars. The shepherd has to go and cut them out. And sometimes not just cut the briar, but cut the wool. Oh, Y'all ain't catching it. Sometimes even down to some of the flesh. Because the briar got into them so deeply that in order to save the sheep, I got to cut you. And the shepherd knows it's hurting him. But he knows the pain of me releasing you is worth it than having you stay hurt in the briar. 
And we as dumb sheep kick and scream while he's trying to cut us out. And he's saying, just be, just be still. Just, just be, be, just be still. Just a little longer. Mm. Y'all still with me today? This ain't one of them hallelujah ones. I know. I know. And Jesus said it, so I know he knows it too. And then what does he do? He takes the sheep. He takes the sheep. Let me put this back on so you can hear me well. And he picks it up and holds it. We've seen it. And holds them by their legs and carries them. Because they're so beat up and bruised and badgered because they got out of the sheepfold because something attracted them other than the door. Let me talk to you. They don't want to hear it. And so he carries them back to the sheepfold because they can't even walk back. Good shepherd. Be careful running from the good shepherd. There's briar out there if you want to play with it. There's lions and tigers and bears, oh my, out there. There's wolves out there. But he built the sheepfold to keep you in and to keep them out. He built an opening without a door so that it never gets old, nor does it have to be painted, nor does it have to be replaced. Because he's the good shepherd and he's also the door. And he knows what needs to be kept in. And he knows what needs to be kept out. And he's able to do it. Stop trying to figure a way to go beyond him. Because there's nothing out there for you but trouble. If he's brought you in from out of there, don't go back out. When he takes you out of the sheepfold, the Bible says what? And he, follow, he goes out ahead of them. He goes out ahead of them, and the Bible says, and they follow him. And when he stops, and for the ones that want to go astray, he says, okay, uh, okay. Watch, watch, watch them. You ready? If you're following another shepherd, stop. If you don't know his voice, find it. If you're in the sheep pen, stay until he takes you out to a greener pasture. He may even walk you through the valley, but fear... I'm with you, my rod and my staff. See, the rod is for the enemy, but the staff is for the sheep. Lord, I wish I had time. I ain't got time. I'll deal with that when I get to the shepherd. My rod is to beat those that got no need being near you, but my staff is to bring you back in close. I am the door. He that doesn't come in by me ain't getting in. And any other way that you try to get in, you'll never get in. Because I'm the door. I'm the gate. I ain't got no key. Don't need one. I am the door. You can enter me at night. You can enter me at day. 
You can come in the noon. You can come in running. You can come in crawling. You can come in crying. But I'm the door. And I don't restrict anybody from coming through me if they understand who I am. And my gatekeepers got me when I'm off. So now I'm seated at the right hand. But the gatekeeper's watching my sheep. I'm done. He's the door. I am. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. He that cometh in by me, good. He that's not coming in by me ain't getting in. And my sheep know my voice. They follow me. <whistles> Other sheep won't follow. Listen. Unless you as his sheep Show them a reason that this shepherd's better than theirs. Y'all ain't catch it. The good shepherd doesn't take other people's sheep. Sheep make other sheep. Shepherds don't make sheep. The way a sheep that's not his knows about him is through you as a sheep following him. Huh. How do they know where water is when there's a drought? Because he knows. How do they know when the path last year that was good has washed out this year because of storms and rains? Because he knows. Hmm. Uh, hey, can, can, I, can I be a sheep with y'all? Sure, come on. Uh, Mr. Shepherd, can he come in? I am the door. Come on in through me. Now you want to be one of my sheep? All I need you to do is follow. But if you're following another shepherd, you're going to get out there. You're going to get caught. Trust me when I tell you, sooner or later, the wolf's going to take the mask off and show you what he is. The dog, the ravenous wild dog, is going to take the mask off and show you. I, I used to watch the Looney Tunes, the old Looney Tunes. Remember the dogs, and, and, and they would put on a mask, and he would try to get, he tried to get to the sheep. He's always trying to get to the sheep. And the little, the little small dog, he was a little small, puny little dog, didn't say much. He would always be protecting those sheep. And the wolf was bigger. The dog was, I'm going back to the 40s, I know. And the, the dog would protect these sheep, and they were just as dumb and oblivious to what was going on. Because, listen, all sheep do is graze. They don't even look up when they graze. They're just so caught up in what they're doing, they're oblivious to what's around them. That's why you need a good shepherd. Because sometimes we can get so focused on what we're doing that we don't see the danger coming our way. But the shepherd has a rod. That little dog would beat, he would beat that... And it was almost like Wile E. Coyote in the road. Right? He would come at him all the time. And the little dog would be just as calm. He'd never get crazy. <laughs> and he would beat the mess out of that wolf. Because the wolf's sole objective was to get himself a lamb or a sheep. Understand this. The thief wants, he wants lamb chops. Can I get some mutton tonight? And the whole job of the shepherd is to keep you from going through the door the wrong way. Stay in. I brought you in. Stay in. Stay in. If you're not in, come in. If you're in, stay in. Nothing going on out there is better than what he's got for you in here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word. It's your word. I thank you, Lord, just for using me that somebody may get your word. Bless us in your word. 
bless us in your strength. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. There's somebody here today and you're outside the pen, either because you're unsaved or somehow you're walking outside the pen and Jesus is coming after you. Listen, before you get all cut up and stuck up in them briars, come on back. If you're saved, come on back. Come on back out of that nonsense. If you're not saved, let him come and get you. It's the shepherd that comes after the sheep. It's not the sheep that goes after the shepherd. Amen. Amen. So, so I'm saying that to say this. He's the good shepherd. He wants you. He loves you. Even though you're in the briar patch, even though you're stuck in thorns and thistles and all kind of stuff, even though you're malnourished or you drank some raggedy water. See, that's another thing. You know, when he says, he leaves me beside the still waters, you know why? Because sheep won't drink from water that's raging. They won't do it. She will only drink from calm water. They're afraid of everything. Sheep are dumb. They're short-sighted. They have no vision. And all they're focused on is what's at hand. So when they eat, they're focused on that. And they won't even drink. But sometimes what will happen is you can get still water. That's poisonous water. He'll still come and get you even if you drank from poisonous water. He'll come and get you if you're stuck in the thorns and thistles. He'll come and get you if a wolf is about to tie into you. He will come and get you wherever you are. You've got to want to let him come and get you when he comes to get you. Amen. Don't fight him. Just let him come get you. Because what he's got for you is better than what you know for yourself. Because don't, don't tell nobody, but you're dumb. Amen. You are. We all are. Why, why does God use that example? Because that's what we are. We're, we're, not, we're, we're not lions that are going to roar back and claw back. We're, we're, not, we're not that. And, and what happens is we, we, try, we try to be like a snake with fangs, but you got no venom. Well, what good are your fangs if you got no venom? So you claw back with what you've got, but it doesn't get you anything. He says, I have to be. That's why I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. I'm the door. I'm the bread. I'm the vine. I am so that in me what you lack, I've got. That's why he's all those I am. Because he knows there's something lacking in every single one of us. And the only one that can fulfill what we're lacking is him. So I'm offering you the door. I'm offering you uh, the gate. I'm offering you the gatekeeper, doorkeeper. I'm offering you uh, 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 the, the bread. I'm offering you the vine. I'm offering you the light, the way, the truth, the life. We'll get to that. Notice it's in John. There's the I am again. We'll get to that one too. He's telling us who he is, not so that we can focus on what he does, but so that we can really know who he is and become part of that and live as part of who he is. He, it's not that he was. He still is. Even though he's not on the earth, he still is. And he's still worthy of us living lives that line up with him. Amen. So any other shepherd won't do it for you. They couldn't if they would, and they wouldn't if they could. But Jesus can and will be the good shepherd for you. That's why I offer to you today. You say, Pastor, how do I know? This is how you know. Jesus is the only one, we preached it a couple weeks ago, who basically said, I am that one. I'm that dude. I'm him. No other person has ever made that claim. Not, not, not and been able to prove it. <laughs> to resurrect and be seen by thousands that weren't followers, but it's documented. He was seen. To ascend and be seen by thousands going up. That's a little different than the average person. He's a little different than the average person. He's not the average person. He's the God man. And I will tell you how I know he is because he's changed my life. <laughs> I'm dumb like you are. And I'm caught up and caught out in other stuff just like you were or are. But I will tell you that wherever you are, when he comes after you, if you let him, 
he will bring you in and make you better and make you whole. That's how I know. I know his word is true because I've seen it in my life. And not just me, countless others, but I'm just speaking for me. I know that he's real because I've seen it. Try him. I always tell people this. If Christianity is wrong and you gave up this life to follow Christ and there was nothing to gain for it, what really did you lose? Maybe some pleasure, some entertainment, you thought, whatever. The flip of that is, if Christianity is right and you didn't give up your life for his, and it's true, what then did you lose? You lose everything. Everything in the present and clearly everything in eternity. So, so on the one hand, you might have lost minimal, but okay. On the other hand, you lose everything. In the minimal, where you lose some, you, you, you gain it all, because you follow him. If you don't follow him, you lose everything and gain nothing. And I don't want to think that God placed us here for five hours, five minutes, five days, five years, five decades, and then we spend eternity away from him. You can't compare a hundred years to a hundred million years. For whatever discomfort you're going through now, it's temporary. But in Christ, you will spend eternity with him in total contentment and bliss. If you gain temporary pleasure, but spend eternity in total torment, was it worth it? My rational mind, no. So I'm offering you the one that even with some aches and pains and bumps and bruises, because we have that in the Christian life, even with that, knowing that it's temporary, even if it's for 20 years, 30, 40, 50 years, it's nothing compared to the glory that I will spend with him in eternity. Walk with Jesus. That's all I've got for you. I'm not telling you you're going to become a millionaire, billionaire. I'm not telling you everybody's going to like you. I'm not telling you everything's going to go your way. You may become a millionaire, billionaire. Maybe some people will like you. Yeah. I don't know. But I will tell you this. At the end of the day, when you stand before him, he will welcome you in because you're part of him. If you don't walk with him, he will say, depart from me. I never knew you. And that's what you don't want to hear. You don't want to hear that. I don't want anybody to hear that. So I'm offering you Jesus. Confess that he's God and you're not. Confess that he's got the right way and your way isn't. Confess that you need life and he's got it. Confess that you need him as Lord and Savior. And come in through him and he'll become your shepherd. Then follow him. Join a church. Get in a Bible study. Get in his word. Learn of him. Grow in him so that when he walks, you walk. When he stops, you stop. He wants you. If he didn't, he wouldn't have come to the planet. <coughs> he came to the planet to save you from your sin, to save me from my sin. So I'm offering you Jesus. Lord, I need you, I want you, I accept you for being God, and I thank you for sending Jesus, who is God, to pay my price so that I can walk and be with you, not only now, but in eternity. You pray that, you believe that, you mean that in your heart, in your head, in your heart, Jesus will save you. Just like that. And then he starts to change you. He does, he starts to change you. And that's for the good. 
So that's what I offer to you today. Amen? You can come here. First Baptist Church, Delaire. That's our address. Come on and type it in. Google it if you want to. 7553 Romeo Ave. We will be starting right now. We're starting at 1030. Soon we'll be starting at around 10. Come on in. We'd love to have you. Um, we just want to teach, preach, and follow the word of God because it's the truth. Okay? All facts aren't truth. But all truth are factual. We want the truth of God. We believe, we believe that he gives that to us through his word and by the power of his Holy Ghost. So come on out. We'd love to have you. Like I said, Sundays, 1030. Come on out. I'll let you know when it changes, but right now it's at 1030. Come on out and join us. Amen. We are wearing masks. We are still spread out a little bit, but come on out. Um, COVID's something we're going to have to deal with. It, it, it's, we're going to learn how to deal with it like we learn how to deal with the flu. I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think it's going to go away. But we'll learn how to deal with it. And we'll do what we have to do. But we also want to walk in the power, the presence, and the might of the Lord Jesus Christ. So come on out. We'd love to have you. For those of you who uh, want to continue to give or, or want to give or are giving, there's the, there's the uh, internet login, if you will www.firstbaptistchurchofdelaire.org forward slash donations. You can give your money. It's through PayPal. It is secure. Hasn't been hacked. <laughs> you know, hackers are trying to get it, I'm sure, because that's all they try to do. That's what, that's what wolves do. They try to get to the sheep. But God has blessed us. And that's a safe way. And that's how we give. Some of us give. And the others give the other way, which is if you want to send it in the mail, or if you want to come to our church, we have a slot. If you want to come to our church and slide it through without mailing it with a stamp, you can slide it through the slot. I would say to you this. Easiest way is to put it in the mail. Whatever the cost of a stamp is, please make it out in a check or a money order. If you send or give us anything, do not put cash in the envelope. Even if you're nearby and you want to give it, you know, if you're going to push it through the slot, you probably could do it in cash. But I still would recommend check or money order. If you want to give it to us, and we appreciate it, there's the address right there, First Baptist Church of Delaire, 7553 Romeo Avenue, Delaire, Pensalkin, New Jersey, 08110. And we appreciate your support. We appreciate your tuning in and watching us. We appreciate us being able to come and meet you where you are with the word of God. So we pray that God would bless you and keep you through this heat today and through this coming week. Understand he's the door. Anything other than him, any other way of access other than him, it's not only not right, it's not good. I don't care what it looks like, what it sounds like, leave it alone. Coming in through him is the best way and the only way to secure that you're going to meet God. And I know others are going to disagree with that, but I'm giving you the gospel of Jesus Christ. So with that, Lord willing, I said it two weeks ago, same bat time, same bat channel. If the creek don't rise, Lord willing, I'll be here. Now, I won't be here next week because I already know I won't be here. I've got something I've got to do. But in two weeks, I'll be here. Guess what, though? Somebody will be here next week because it's not somebody nor mine or anybody else's gospel. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all we are are mail carriers. All we do is deliver the message. And if you got an issue or praise, you give it to the one who sent it. And that's God Almighty. So God bless you. God love you. God keep you. God be gracious upon you. God loves you. I love you. Stay cool. Lord willing, we'll see you next week. Amen. <laughs>